This video is about the market structure of perfect competition. We make a range of different assumptions about the characteristics of a market which has the structure of perfect competition. One of those is there are a large number of firms. So all of these firms are competing with each other to try and take customers off each other. They, those firms in the market, in a perfectly competitive market, produce homogenous products. And that means that the products offered by different firms are identical to each other. There are no barriers to entry and exit in this market structure, which means it's completely costless and easy for new potential firms to enter the market. And it's also completely costless for firms who are currently operating in the market just to leave at any point they wish to. Firms and consumers have perfect knowledge, so it's totally transparent. And if one firm was to, for example, try and increase their prices, then it's going to be immediately obvious to all the other firms and consumers operating in that market. And then firms are going to be price takers. So that means they accept the going market price. And if they try to increase their price above this market price, they would actually end up losing all of their customers. So this seems relatively extreme um, and it is it is a theoretical extreme. We don't really observe the market structure of perfect competition in the real world. Um, maybe the, the closest you might get or one example of something which gets close might be fruit sellers uh, where they all come together, maybe getting their fruit from the same supplier big market stall, all of them lined up next to each other. You can see that gets relatively close to a large number of firms, really, really similar products, quite easy to start selling in that market. Immediate knowledge where consumers can compare between the products and the firms in that market would then be price takers. Um, but you can see it's quite unlikely that all of those characteristics will be fully satisfied for a perfectly competitive market. So we can now see how these characteristics will play out in a theory of the firm diagram and starting out by looking at perfect competition in the short run. And so we said, looking at those characteristics, that the firm will have to accept the going market price. So it is a price taker. So that price will be determined by the forces of supply and demand in the market. And then this diagram that we have here is showing the situation for the individual firm. So that price will be decided by the market and then the individual firm will face a horizontal, perfectly elastic demand curve. Because we said that if they try and raise that price at any point above that price point, then they will immediately just lose all of their, their customers because of that perfect information in the market. So it's a horizontal, perfectly elastic demand curve. And we said that we've said before that demand is equal to average revenue. Our demand curve is the same as our average revenue curve. And in this case, that will be the same as the marginal revenue curve as well. And the reason for that is because marginal revenue curve will be twice the steepness of the average revenue curve. And if the average revenue curve is horizontal, um, then the marginal revenue curve is just going to be the same as that. You can't have twice the steepness of a horizontal curve. And so the point that the firm is going to operate at is going to be their profit maximizing output. And that's going to be at the point where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. So we've looked in our work on profit at why that's the profit maximizing output. So we can accept for that for, for here and the firm in perfect competition, if they're trying to profit maximize, they will produce at that point on the diagram when marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. And you can see at that point in the short run, it is possible that they can make super normal profits because at that profit maximizing output, the average revenue is higher than the average cost. So the firm can make super normal profits shown by this rectangle here, which is made up by the vertical difference between the average revenue and the average cost curve. And you can read across and that rectangle shows us the area of super normal profits that are available to the firm operating in perfect competition in the short run. 
So we've seen there that it is very possible for supernormal profits to be made in the short run in perfectly competitive markets. And we should say that depending on the position of those curves, it's also possible for normal profits or losses to be made in the short run. But what is certain is that in the long run, the firm will reach a more stable equilibrium where only normal profits are made. And the reason for that is the key feature of those perfectly competitive markets is there are zero barriers to entry and exit. And that means that if demand were higher than that point and those supernormal profits were available, they would attract new entrants into that market who would then compete away those supernormal profits. So we can show that on these simultaneous diagrams here with the individual firm shown on this side and the market position shown on this side. So the curves that are in color show us the possible position of the firm in the short run making supernormal profits and then going across to the market situation those supernormal profits attract new firms into the market which then increases the market supply because you've now got more firms wanting to come in and produce in that market which then pushes down that demand curve for the individual firm because there's now more firms operating in the market. So each individual firm has fewer customers actually to sell to. And you can see it only pushes it down just to the point where average revenue is equal to average cost. Because if it went any further than that, and if demand went lower than that point, then firms would start making losses in the short run and it would mean that some would leave the market because of the costless exit from the market until we were back to a stable long run equilibrium with only normal profits available. So we can actually see that now a little bit bigger, this stable equilibrium position in perfect competition in the long run where you've got your average revenue, average cost and marginal cost curve all meet together at the same point. Now, what's really critical to evaluating all of these market structures is thinking about how efficient the outcomes will be that are provided by the firms operating within these markets. So in terms of perfectly competitive markets, in the long run, we have our diagram here productive efficiency first that's when firms are making the best possible use of their resources they're reducing waste and in terms of the diagram they are minimizing their average costs because if average costs were higher than this then the firm could be making a better job of doing that better job of utilizing their resources and minimizing their cost per unit so minimum average cost is what we're looking for with productive efficiency and we can see the equilibrium point in the long run in perfect competition is at the point of the minimum average cost curve and so productive efficiency is achieved Another type of efficiency we think about in economics is allocative efficiency, and this is where consumer satisfaction is maximized. And the utility received from consumers, from, from consuming a good, is most uh, sensibly measured by the price they're willing to pay for that good. And so allocative efficiency will be achieved at the point where price is equal to marginal cost, which is the point at which the value that's placed on the good by that consumer is equivalent to the additional cost of producing that good. And so we can see on the diagram here, price is equal to marginal cost at that point. All of the curves meet together at this point here. So in the long run, perfectly competitive markets will produce allocative efficiency. But finally, Dynamic efficiency is when firms can improve their efficiency over time through productivity gains and innovation. And the problem with perfectly competitive markets in the long run is that firms are not able to earn those supernormal profits, which then leaves them nothing to reinvest in research and development and inventing and innovating. So it's very unlikely then that perfect competition 
will provide dynamically efficient outcomes. So you can say a tick for productive efficiency, a tick for allocative efficiency, but unlikely that firms will achieve dynamic efficiency. So as well as looking at these efficiency outcomes, we could further evaluate the implications of perfect competition by discussing the fact that actually, as we said at the start, it's completely theoretical extreme. So no markets fully satisfy the characteristics of perfect competition. So some people would say that actually makes it a little bit pointless in analysing a market structure that doesn't really exist in the real world. But the counter to that is that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not useful because it can be used as a benchmark to compare to other market structures. So you can look at those efficiency outcomes and compare it to what's happening in other um, contrasting markets. And you can also then look at the implications of what's going to be the case if markets move closer towards perfect competition, what's going to be the likely implications of that.